public, so, okay. Um, next, we have um, approval of minutes for July, August, and September. I move to approve the minutes of July, August, and September of 2014. I had one correction, actually, I'm sorry, for the September ones. Um, there was one item on the September ones where it said, um, what accessible projects or working in your community, and I think it should say what accessibility projects are working in your community. Okay, that came right off the agenda, so. I know. Okay, well that was, it's just a, it's just a minor grammatical. I didn't, I didn't hear what it was. Um, it said, um, for the September 2014 minutes, I was just saying, I correction, and it said, what accessible projects or working in your community, and I was saying I believe it should read what accessibility projects are working in your community. It was just a grammatical thing. I just, I had one question. Um, there was one of them you talked about um, uh, kind of a service for some person that I didn't know who they were. Oh, you're talking about the, the Trago Memorial? Yeah. yeah, that was on September 12th. It was it was a city um, community event that recognized six individuals who had contributed to the vitality in Northampton. Uh, it's named after you, you the Trago, who died in 2011. And, uh, and speaking of Daniel Yacuzov, I mean, I'm sure in two yeah. years when uh, the next class goes in, he'll has a 100% chance of, of being on there as he rightly should. Oh, he'll be on it. Yeah, yeah. that's why it's a hundred percent chance. You know, but unfortunately, it's, it, you know, it's, it's every yeah. two years. So mm -hmm. the next time they do it, uh, he's an automatic as far as I'm concerned. Excellent. And we had a motion to approve the minutes. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is the proposal for portable ramps in downtown Northampton, and Louis Hasbrook. Um, building Commissioner is, is with us to provide information. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Thank you. Very much. So, is, I think it's your proposal, Michael. Yeah. You want to elaborate on it a little bit? Or yeah, why don't first? you take the lead on this conversation? Uh, well, no, the proposal is just that. Um, <coughs> there would be two foot, perhaps, or three foot ramps. Uh, to be decided on that would reside at the police station. Those ramps could be checked out by someone from the police station for their use for some amount of time to be decided. Uh, kind of like a library book, I guess, is what I'm thinking in terms of. And this is your group, Michael? What's the name of your group? Oh, the, um, uh, okay. yeah, um, group for accessibility improvements in the organization. Yeah. Oh, that's great. But basically, that's, that's the idea of that. For me, there are so many one step up buildings that it would be real nice to have a ramp available to be able to get into those one step up buildings. Well, there's two, as far as the building code for the architectural access board code sanctioning them, it would be difficult. The, um, the, the building code um, essentially requires, if, if they were to be viewed as a temporary structure, they would have to be fully compliant, and a little two or three foot ramp wouldn't do it. And the Architectural Access Board goes at it in much the same way. Uh, they really, uh, they put a lot of requirements on temporary accessible elements. Um, now, outside of that, as an individual, I, I'm not sure, um, if what, um, <coughs> if either the architectural access board code or the building code, which would be myself or the um, 
Architectural Access Board in Boston would have any authority over it. Um, but I'd really <coughs> encourage um, the, the next step to be uh, a discussion <coughs> involving the uh, Architectural Access Board people from Boston and um, perhaps Stavros as the independent living center. And I think and I participate in that. Um, and I think that I could invite somebody from the Architectural Access Board to a, to a discussion. But I'd really want, as, as the, they are actually the authority having jurisdiction over accessible elements in Massachusetts. And I'd, I'd encourage all of us to sit down and talk to them and get their view on it. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, the idea or the the idea behind this is that um, if you are renting that ramp or leasing the ramp or however having that ramp, <coughs> it becomes your ramp so that you can use it to get in because it's yours, even if it does not mean Right. Any particular code? Right. No, I, I think. Right. Right. I think we could we can work with that, and I do. But I'd be real interested in having the architectural access board, mm -hmm. somewhat representative from their office, and also somebody from Stavros um, to be involved. In. Um, the one thing that I could tell you is that as time goes by, more and more places in Northampton are becoming accessible. You can't spend very much money on a renovation project without having to create an accessible entrance. And I'm not sure if you see it, um, how apparent it is. The most recent one was uh, the subway restaurant was improved and the, uh, the new dry cleaners were, was improved. And uh, basically two businesses not very far from each other to the point where they are, they are accessible. Yeah, I'm not sure where the subway is. Um, it's going to open tonight, so oh. probably not. It's up on the main streets. Where the cleaners used to be closed. Right. Oh, oh, where oh, main street right. cleaners was. Right. Right. Main yeah. street cleaners subsequently moved. And uh, the most uh, recently on uh, Pleasant Street, uh, number 264, okay. created a, um, created an accessible entrance. Yes. That yeah, that was really good that they did that. And my understanding is that if you renovate a building to more than 25% of the value of the building, it has to be made accessible. It's a little bit part of the renovation. It's a little different than that. It's it's actually 33%, but if um, the first floor store is doing the renovations it's 33% of the value of their space, so not the whole building necessarily. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, it, it's the, the Architectural Access Board regulations are real clear, and, and we're, the city is very uh, diligent about uh, enforcing the, the requirements. So did those businesses that um, have entrances that are now handicap accessible, did they do that because it was the right thing to do or because their 33% of um, fixing it needed to meet that requirement? Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't honestly know. I mean, I know there have been people who've done some renovations and they, they've cut way back on the renovations because of the difficulties in making something accessible. There's some, on some of the, uh, hilly side streets like Old South Street, Crafts Avenue, there's mm -hmm. some two or three step. Um, oh yeah, some of those buildings are just impossible. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but the, the Red Lion Diner, Kathy's Diner, is you know in the process of renovation planning. And they will get an accessible, they will, that building is worth not a whole lot of money. And so they're going to have a ramp even if they just paint the inside of it, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and and the plans, the, the, all the plans I've seen for that are for an accessible space. And then, for instance, with the subway, who now is handicap accessible, mm -hmm. do they now have a handicap accessible bathroom as well? If the if the if the code, the building, and the plumbing code requires that they have a bathroom, 
for instance, oh. a restaurant needs right. a bathroom, yeah. then it has to be an accessible bathroom. But like a store, a mercantile, doesn't require that they provide a public bathroom, so it's not, uh, so it doesn't end up needing to be an accessible bathroom. But the 264 Elm Street is the, it's a co-op dentists and uh, doctors and they're doing uh, enough renovations in the building to trigger the requirements for uh, a new accessible bathroom in the common area. And so within, over the past like four years, they, they've, they've renovated one of the bathrooms into an accessible bathroom and now the other bathroom is going to be made into an accessible so as time goes by, you know, there are improvements to accessibility. Right, right. Well, you'll understand, though, that it is in my interest right. to push it. For sure. I can, no, and I, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at a little piece, and it's probably going to be in the 10 years of, of my tenure, 15 places, mm -hmm. and that's out of, you know, how many hundreds of places that right. there are. So, and Michael, you've been working yeah. on this how long? Why? Why why? Um, do you have any idea of what the ramps would look like? Is there, you know, cataloging or something that we could Yeah, I mean basically I, I just I've got them. And it's just uh, a little two foot ramp. It's um, it's basically just uh, not stainless steel, but just aluminum. Yeah, aluminum and it folds up and then unfolds and so I, I have some pictures of um, some ramps. Oh that, okay. yeah, and they range in price from three fifty nine to um, four thirty nine. There, there's a whole a whole group of I'll pass this around to you. Thank you. But you know you can go online and you can find everything. So, yeah, I mean the one I have is just like a hundred and thirty, I think. And if you just want to see them, the disability store up down by Big Y okay. has all of them for rent. They have five different sizes. Oh. So, Michael, can I ask you this question? So, if, if this, these are available at the police department and you want to go into a particular restaurant, how would you get the ramp to the restaurant? That is up to the person. Up to okay. the person? Yeah. The person who's okay. borrowing so, the ramp. So, yeah, for I mean, instance, I how would you do it? How would I do it? Yeah. I'd have someone with me. Okay. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. And how, Michael, is the liability part of it covered? Say you place it in front of a store, whatever, as an example. You go up it. Who's responsible? Would you yeah. be uh, Would you be responsible? Because you'd have to remove that. So other people can access into a restaurant or wherever. Right. So, I mean, see, again, this is kind of what I was thinking with around this was that if it's your ramp, it's your liability. Um, because if you're talking about um, stores with ramps, the liability would then fall on the store if anything happens with respect to that what ramp. But that's I'm not inter I I wanna not I wanna have the person be liable. So it's not it's not an added burden on the store. I don't think the store would want an added burden. No. I mean they pay not a tremendous all. amount of money in the city right now. Right, right, exactly. I mean, for me, that was the whole point of... Because I thought last time, if I'm correct, you had stated, well, people could go to the police department and they could go ahead and ask us and write one. Yeah, that's the other right, thing. Right, that's, that's the other thing you said. Well, I, yeah, so however the access works, whether it's a rental, whether it's a takeout, whether... And whether who would be is. responsible handling the financial part of it if they're renting? You are saying it would be at the police station. Have you talked with the chief in regards to the financial part of it? And who would set up a fund for this financial part? I'm, I'm not understanding what you mean. Because oh, there's a fee. Yeah. Right. We're talking about a portable grant. I will donate the first three. 
The first what? Three of them, if you want, or even more. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, I'll just donate them. Well, okay, say you donate them, but you're asking the police department to keep them there, correct? And you've already talked to the chief about that? Well, I'm not talking to the chief. I talked to the guy who was on duty here when I went over there. Okay. So. Anyway, so my question is, say you buy three, four, ten, or whatever. Some, Patty wants to rent it. What is the cost for her renting it? That is all know? to be determined. Okay, but I now mean, we're getting into what I'm asking. Whatever price you make a determination on, you are asking the police department to handle that determination of a price that's going to be rented for, correct? Yeah. Well, if it's I there at the I police state, no, you said this last time at our meeting, that the police department would handle the rental of the ranch. Right. Okay. <coughs> I think we need, once I know what's happening here, we'll see what the chief has to say if they're going to have a separate account, not in the general fund, a special account, and who will be responsible for handling that money and where it's going to be placed. That's another thing that we Well, I really like to see the I would really yeah. like to see the disability commission have to uh, mm -hmm. dealing with the finances of it. I had, a, talking money. I had a, I had another um, I had another question too yeah. when talking about the um, the liability issue and the person taking on the liability. Mm -hmm. Would people when they rented it be asked to sign something saying that they understand that? Yeah, that, that, that would be a good idea. That yes, that would certainly. Oh, Ruth, you have a question? Yeah, I have a li kind of on the liability line. These ramps are hinged in the middle. Who's to say somebody goes, signs out a ramp at the police station, puts it down, and halfway up the hinge lets go, for example, or because they only have about a two-inch rib along the side to keep you from going off, somebody, for some reason or another, falls over to the side. Now, if you're a pedestrian and you fall on a sidewalk in front of a store, um, I believe the store is responsible, or is the city responsible? The sidewalk in front of a, a store. store. Well, I think there's a line between the store right. and the sidewalk. <coughs> you know, once, I mean, if you fell with your feet on both sides of the line, I think it would be Either difficult. Way. But so on the sidewalk, it does belong to the city. Right, and so I, if, I know what she's saying. Yeah, if this is hooked into a store, If we have stairs. a snowstorm, the owners are highly responsible. This is where I think you're coming at, Ruth. They are highly responsible for clearing that sidewalk for what? Well, this is just even on a sunny day, the ramp goes over the stairs and mm -hmm. down onto the sidewalk. But when you fall, if you're falling on the store property, mm -hmm. even if you're a pedestrian, <coughs> the store is responsible. Oh. So if somebody goes over a ramp or if the ramp happens to break in the middle, um, and if these things are rented out, you don't know what kind of treatment they're going to get or anything before they return. Who's going to be liable in that case? The store owner? And I that, I I'm think, would be a real problem. Well, see, mine was, I, what I was trying to do is that, so you are responsible. Um, I Everybody don't says that. But, you know, when it comes down to it and they have the opportunity to mm -hmm. sue, oh, yeah. 10 Anybody to 1 they do. Anybody. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if the stores would be willing to open themselves up to that. Just It was just something I was thinking about. Then. I think it's something very serious to look at. So there, there's a lot of, I think, um, specifics about this, but it, in listening to uh, Lou, to be able to get somebody from the area here, um, and certainly Stavros is right over there in Amherst, right. that we could get a, a person to come speak to us as well and find out the nuts and bolts of that part of it before, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, is there a waiver form? Is, you know, who's going to do, you know, let's say, um, the record keeping, the purchasing, and all of that. Who's somebody so from the Home Sweet Home program that at South Rose that they rent out or give out? And also, I don't know if this is the committee pen of handling finances of somebody renting. Yeah. yeah, I think there's a lot of 
I have yeah. some questions. I just want this to be talked about. Right, that's so what I'm I have an opportunity, perhaps, to get into some of these one step up buildings. Yeah, yeah, right, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to air out things, listening to you, listening to you about where you're suggesting about financing going and where the money will be placed. I think we could also probably get uh, one of the local attorneys to come and talk mm -hmm. about liability. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, That's he do, let's say, Attorney Winston, what type of a lawyer are you? I do mostly disability law, mm -hmm. um, and uh, when we get to new business, I have somebody that will be that said about some services in the city, but we'll get to that later on. But mostly what I do is help people that can't work full time. Yeah, as I was thinking, um, there's there's a few attorneys um, that, I mean, I think do a lot with liability. One person that comes to mind is Joe DeFazio. Yeah, well, he's excellent. And then, um, or Ed Etheridge, and mm -hmm. I think that mm -hmm. we, could, uh, we could convince one of those, a person, one of those, an attorney who has that sort of position in town to come and talk about it. I know that um, this, I live in a condo association community and we worked, uh, it ended up that we created a club to fix bicycles. And so it avoid being a, being a member of the club and using the condo <coughs> facilities gets the, um, gets the, uh, Condo association out from underneath the liability, mm -hmm. um, right. and it was an agreement. But and the Pat Melnick drew up a, a really small uh, set of uh, purpose of the club and a release of liability. So, but that senior I mean, or junior? Uh, senior. Well, he doesn't. He's not that old. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, and uh, and then the other thing that occurs to me is. You know, the bid is out there, and I don't know, they're much less of a municipal mm. um, uh, right. entity and more on the private sector. And, and then the one other thing that occurred to me is that if you don't charge rent, then the only thing that needs to get dealt with, I'm sure you'd want some kind of a significant deposit on it. So there would be some money involved, but it wouldn't be exactly rent. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking in terms of it. That, you know, the rent would just be um, like a replacement cost or some portion of a replacement cost. Right, or just a deposit. And, yeah. and that we, you know, that, that there's a fundraising effort to buy some of them. And mm -hmm. then right. they get put into some kind of a non municipal um, set, setup. So the so the, the city I don't think wants to assume I don't know if the city would want to assume the, the liability that might attach but we'll also get an attorney here to talk about various kinds of liability. Yeah, I mean, you know, what I was thinking in terms of the police station was it's open mm -hmm. three sixty five, mm -hmm. you know, twenty four hours a day. Yeah. Well that that makes sense. So I would suggest that we have a subcommittee to work on this. Mm -hmm. Have a subcommittee to work on this. Plus, he this is an organization. Oh yeah, so your exactly. members would, would be great to be um, part of this. Yeah. Right, if you could bring them in to speak and so forth. Mm -hmm. Well, that's my suggestion to have a subcommittee. I think um, that's a great suggestion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Who would be interested in being on that subcommittee? I'd, I'd be interested. How many people are involved in this group, Accessibility of Northampton? It's, it's a group where if you say you want to be involved, you're involved. So it's a constantly... Constantly changing. Morphing. It's just mm -hmm. a... Well, well, if you could bring them in, I'd go to come in and talk and stuff like that. Yeah. That would be very helpful, too. I mean, if somebody else runs point on this, I, I have a lot of contact information. I, mean, I think that's probably the biggest thing I can bring to the table is um, email addresses and telephone numbers of most of the people that will want to get involved. Um, 
so if we can work out some kind of a sense of timing and, and uh, who we want to ask and let me know then and I can help out with you know, contact information. So, um, right, so for a subcommittee, Mike, I'm assuming you would yeah. want to be on that and Hannah said she's interested. Mm -hmm. Would anyone else be interested? Do we have to vote on having a subcommittee? No, I think in the bylaws we can, we can have subcommittees. Anyone else interested in being on a subcommittee to look further into this? Well, it can be you too. Yeah, at least it's you can be the sub. You can be in touch with each other and then um, mm -hmm. come back and bring it back to, you know, our meeting and update us and work on it. I think that's, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Can I just ask, because, because we have Louie here, mm -hmm. um, the um, comment um, or statement made that the police station doors were not handicap accessible? Oh, we did go and test it. We have a scale, um, and they open at a very <coughs> right rate. The problem is, is that using a wheelchair, they pull towards you, and it's really difficult to get a door open. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, I mean, they, they are compliant, they, this, and they meet the, uh, I understand that the code is not what it might be, and um, it would, I think it would, certainly would be better if they had a power door button, but yeah. mm -hmm. they were designed and built according to the accessibility code. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. It's, it's like, I understand right. that. Right. All I'm saying is yeah. that. When I want to get in there, I just sit outside and rap on the door until the guy inside hears me and can come out and open it. You can always call the front desk on your cell phone too and say, hey, I'm outside. Well, yeah. well I don't have a cell phone. So is there a oh, way yeah. though, Louis, that that could be adjusted? Or, I mean, if somebody's in a wheelchair and there's difficulties for them to access, even though they've done what they could to protect themselves with the code, question is, can they just upgrade somehow? Well, we could, the we could, uh, right. they could put a, a power opener on the door, and I'm sure that could get retrofitted. I think the difficulty, um, well, I mean, there's, I think there's, um, they certainly, the technology exists, mm -hmm. and it gets right. done an awful lot of Mm -hmm. Of course, my question is, why didn't that happen to start with? Well, well because there's a code, right. and, and so they figured they got the code. Well, but they—they, they, I mean, the code is very elaborate, and it goes on to talk about how many inches you need oh, yeah, to the to the yeah, to the to the side yeah. of the pull side of the door, and how hard the door needs to open, right, and how much right, space right, you need right. on both sides of it. And, I mean, it did get done with that in mind, um, mm. and it may well be that um, in the future the code will change. And I've seen some of the proposals for the new code, and it's certainly a lot stricter than the old code was, but um, it was a municipal project, and um, it, was, it was only built to code. It, there, it, didn't right, exactly. it, didn't, it didn't exceed the code in that aspect of it. Yeah. Right. So it is um, kind of acceptable, but it's not welcoming at all. Right. Right, yeah. right and we have to convince somebody to spend uh, more than what they're required to spend. And unfortunately, with municipal, I mean, I just finished the, the process with a school in Williamsburg. And the same thing, it got, it got parsed to the point where what was, what was designed and what was built met the requirements of the code, but there certainly could have been a lot of improvements. Um, <coughs> one thing that's really, I think, really interesting about the new police station is it has accessible cells if you ever needed to. <laughs> Good to know. All right, well. <laughs> there were a lot of, that, that was, there was an awful lot of work that went into that, I'm sure. that one accommodation. Mm -hmm. um, if you can get in the door. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Well, thank you.
you'd, you'd always have somebody opening the door for you. <laughs> you have a special door. Yeah. Well, are there any other um, questions or comments about this? Thank you for coming. Yes, Thank my you question is just a minute, please, Tori. My question is, Lily, you've heard what Michael's concerns are. Would you bring that forth to the chief of Michael's concerns about the door? I can provide the technical expertise, but I'd really encourage the Commission on Disability to be the ones who approach it. Okay. Um, Chief Sigowitz is a very approachable. I don't think you'd have trouble getting, um, you know, a discussion with him. Yeah. Uh, but there I think go, it would Michael. be the, the commission. Just take your wheelchair and yourself and go up and visit them. Yeah. There it goes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you have to know he's there. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you so thank much you for much. coming. Yeah, appreciate it. Sure. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, our next agenda item is update on handicapped parking in Florence. Kathy, is that you? Yep. Uh, so the two spots that were passed by ordinance, one of which was in front of uh, Ms. Lark's diner, that sign is in and that's the one that was approved years ago but never got installed. We're still waiting for a sign to be put up in front of birds on Maple Street. Um, and I did... Uh, What's that? Excuse me. What is this noise like? It's, it's, uh, it's, my keyboard. it's because the... Um, the, uh, the microphone, microphone picks up the vibration from the keyboard. Really? Uh, well, I have to turn the, it down then. I can do that. And then I'll be able to hear. Well, let's try this. See if this helps. I've never heard it do that before. We've never been up this loud before, I don't think. I think it's, it's up louder. Yeah. But if, if that's what we can see, see if this, let me, let me just try typing. That's better. That's better. much better. Okay, okay good. Um, so I uh, contacted the DPW to find out is there some word on when it's going to get put in, and um, I, I haven't heard back um, yet. So we're still waiting for that HP spot okay. um, to be enacted in Florence on Maple Street. Okay. Update on benches in Florence. Yep, this probably will get um, rolled into the uh, vibrant sidewalk, the video, what's going to be next on the agenda. Right. But um, Councillor Labarge, Councillor Klein, and myself were up in Florence. We selected a couple spots for benches, and um, the mayor has now taken um, to assist us getting those benches placed in Florence. So it's a long story, um, but the end result will be that at least two benches will be up there. Um, of which $3,500 the uh, Commission on Disability uh, voted to um, mm -hmm. purchase um, a bench with a flap or benches. I'm going to just say that I'm not sure that <clears throat> that amount of money is going to buy two benches with flap. So you'll know that when DPW tells us how much the benches are. Okay, that's great. Um, all right. Vibrant Sidewalks, video of the October 14th, 2014 public hearing held at the Florence Civic Center. Right. So I'm just going to have to say something about that. Sorry. That's okay. okay. No, go ahead. Okay. I think I'm holding it. Okay, so this is only one portion of the entire um, hearing. And this was the hearing that Councillor Labarge, Councillor Klein, Councillor... Um, Word for Gina Louise Garrett. Yes, yeah, thank you. Um, um, but uh, this was the second one. This one was up at the Florence Civic Center. And so what you're hearing is a portion of that meeting um, that Robert Ross, who um, is speaking, and um, yeah. so we're, we're presenting that to the committee. If you didn't listen to it, from the link that Ruth sent us all. Right, and that is a, a request, Patty. I think you should state that. As a city council, mm -hmm. I felt that you need to hear yeah. what was presented from Bob Ross when he had stated that he also was representing the Florence Civic Business Association. Yeah. 
So you need to watch this and listen it, to it. It was also covered in the Gazette. They had uh, yeah. Yeah, there there was one of the reporters. There, there was. Crowley. Dan Crowley was there. Yeah, yeah I talked to yeah. him. There was, there was an article in the Gazette. Yeah, there was. And it's also, um, I found it on YouTube. And the mayor okay. also has the video. Okay. So, and it's okay. also the video is on my screen if anybody didn't get a chance to see it. But I. Can't if anyone wants the, the visuals, TV. but we have the we have yeah. the audio. Okay, go okay. ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Ruth. They would come on. Yeah. They turn. They were just just playing very loudly. Speakers. <coughs> Just yeah, I know. It was just playing, and now it's gone dead. Hmm. I don't know what I did. Um, Maybe restart it. I just tried that; it didn't work. So while we're waiting, mm -hmm. I'll just, I'll, that's okay. Um, you can't help it. Um, I'll just keep going through the agenda, and then when it comes back on, we'll come back to okay. it. Um, so the next item: um, Forbes Library Grant, and this is something. I have to say, now that um, GazetteNet has become, now that their website has become accessible to me again, it's wonderful because I can see all these things that are happening. And um, mm -hmm. I had read in the paper that Forbes Library got a grant to make. <coughs> you have it, Ruth? Yeah. Okay, so to be continued, we'll watch the video. Now. So while you're while you're working on that, I'll just finish about Forbes Library. So they have a grant to make their services accessible, and they are looking for input and feedback from people with disabilities. So um, Lisa Downing, who I think is the assistant director of the library and who's heading up the project, to come to our November meeting so that we can hear what they're planning and see. Um, how we can help them and how we can collaborate and give her some ideas. So I just want to announce that that's happening in November. And I apologize, I should this speak Who got a hold of her? Patty did. Wait, you invited her. Yep, because she had asked me to. Yep. So that will be really good. Um, um, I'm here from the Farm Civic Business Association first about the benches. Um, we were disturbed to find out that, uh, that there was a movement for benches in downtown Park without involving the business community in downtown Park. Um, many of the business owners feel that there are adequate benches at this point in time for us, the tracks that we have. Uh, the bench is located in the park at the center of the Main Street and the other Main Street at Snowhead um, Park Bank, as well as the bus stop in the center. There are two new ones proposed for the mobile, the mobile uh, complex, which are some birds. We may not be here today, I'll tell you. Um, and we are very concerned about what has uh, transpired in downtown Mokanka with the benches, and we are you know, kind of taking a careful eye on how that might develop in uh, downtown Forest. Uh, that's all I have to say for. Uh, Association, which apparently uh, you did get a letter from us about this, I believe, um, in our concerns for the mayor. Um, but as a citizen of downtown Florence, I, I don't see how this yeah. speaks directly to public yeah. spaces in downtown Florence. Yeah. The purpose is mostly the sidewalks in North Texas. So maybe the urgency as such. Uh, some of the activities it talks about would be more. Likely to happen in our park areas and not, in, not on our sidewalks. Um, and I don't know if that's what it's speaking to or not because it's not here in this resolution. Um, it says it's 
and I heard earlier from Jesse that the roots of the space of justice doesn't really leave, leave the space. To me, it's become societal. And as far as urban development, there have been no studies or none cited in this about downtown form. So I think it's hard to say that whatever translates downtown or is going to translate to the village community forms that are our upgrade is different, our parking is different, the way our street is approached is different, it's more of a driving community, a service oriented community, where people are more likely to drive to the location that they do business, not so much the parking shop alone. Um, I do know that there aren't any tax cases in Florence, I know there's some slated that didn't get put into place, but at the same time, there's not going to be one for every business in downtown points for parking. Um, you can park in any parking space with a handicap placard. A lot of people don't know that. Um, and in Florence, there's lots of open parking spaces. So in some ways, it's great. But there's plenty of parking in downtown points. And I know there, are there was a handicap spot by one city, and there were some other places for NGO that were appropriated a long time ago and never painted in. So that's great and uncomfortable. But Still not everyone, all of the young, am I correct? Oh. Um, and sadly, we just repaid uh, downtown points, so I don't think our sidewalks are getting any wider, our streets are getting now. They just kind of stuck with us for about 20 years. Um, we are disappointed that 30 years ago, or 1980, our sidewalks would be done. We didn't get improved sidewalks. We didn't get the brick overlay. We didn't get the Victorian campus. We're still stuck with our lease. Uh, some women hold a lot of dense them that we really like to have in place. More than a park, park bench at this point. This is what this really sets the tone. I need this for that. For the way it works. The way to enjoy your community. Not so much about furniture. I mean, furniture doesn't make your community. How you build your community, how, you, how, you, how your community works for you. So I think there's a give and take here. And I really, I mean, I'm a little bit cut off about the whole, I don't know, tolerance that we're supposed to, that is put into this, that we're the morality that we should have already inside of us. So the fact that this gets preached to us from our government in some ways, I find a little, I, I, don't, I don't know, is this an ordinance or is this, uh, I think you say ordinance, but I heard resolution. So it's basically some sort of non binding code of well being. October 14, 2014, and then um, there was a search result, and I clicked on that, and that worked. So that is a way to be able to watch it. So a way to wire with people are having problems getting onto that link like that, not hearing it. Oh, not hearing it? The only one I've heard that can't, well, you have issues, but 
I don't know why Patty can't yeah, hear it. I can't get it out of my laptop. Tori heard it fine. Yeah, people are fighting. It's just not Patty. Yeah. Yeah. Tori got it fine. Yeah, but yeah. I, I got no. it. I had to do it through a search. I wasn't able to yeah, get that. The it. link itself. I don't know yeah. what browser you're using or um, yeah, how true. it works, but the oh. link worked fine for oh, you. The I put it on my. Fine for me. I, yeah, I could see the picture. Yeah, I yeah. Could, yeah, but I couldn't get the sound. I so. actually, I actually did it on my iPhone, and it worked fine. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll try something different. But um, so if everybody does. So the mayor of that one had no problems. She was able yeah, to get yeah. onto that link. Yeah, Pam's got it. She got onto it fine. Yeah. I think there's a lot of variability as far as like what we said, what browser you're using, what type of device you're using, mm -hmm. and um, I just really wanted to see it, so I was very persistent. So I did it through um, a search on YouTube, and that worked. But um, I'm gonna try that. Yeah, try that. But um, okay, what I'd like to talk about, Tori, yeah. is that the mayor presented a proclamation at City Council. National Disability Employment Awareness Month, October 2014. After we had the meeting, the open public hearing in Florence at the Florence Civic Association, I made an appointment to go right in and see the mayor. And you're an attorney for people with disabilities. And this is my feelings toward this of what occurred here. Whereas, ADA ensures the civil rights of people with disabilities, establishing a clear and comprehensive national mandate for the elimination of discrimination against individuals with disabilities. And all <laughs> persons deserve and have the right to an accessible workplace, accessible schools, public spaces, public spaces, and an accessible community. And I feel that was right there, a civil rights issue of not allowing people to have the rights to be able to have a bench and sit down, mm -hmm. the rights to be able to have a handicapped parking sign on streets. And the mayor knows how I feel about this. I also told the mayor that I felt that this is a commission. I told the mayor it's Patty's responsibility also as ADA coordinator that we write a letter to the commission in Boston of what has occurred here. I think it's wrong for somebody to actually tell any individual some disabilities are visible, some are not. And I also fail to say to people, well, we have benches in a park and we have an ADA coordinator who tried to explain, well, sometimes that person with a disability only can go to A, but you want them to go to D, which they cannot do. They need to sit down, they need to rest, yep. and then they can proceed to go to B. Just like Ruth, she did and was very articulate, and also I have to say that Chris Palamas who is an activist, an activist who lives on my ward, who attended that meeting on people with disabilities, agreed about benches, yep. how they are to be used for the assets of people with disabilities. And I feel there was a breach here of people against people with disabilities. I was very hurt. I thought it was hurtful and it was not there for every one of us with a disability. Yeah. It was pretty blatant. It was pretty awful. Michael, I don't know how you feel about this, but I'm very heartbroken about it. Okay. <coughs> yeah, I don't know how I feel. I, I just couldn't hear what was going on. Okay. Try the, uh, what I said. Patty, maybe you can I, I talk to Michael and let Michael know exactly what Mr. Ross had stated. Uh, um, what Bob overall didn't see the point of handicapped parking um, on the streets because he made reference to everything that's behind the buildings for handicapped parking. I mean, otherwise, it's just the one uh, handicapped spot by uh, Florence Savings, although now we do have the one in front of the uh, diner. Um, and about that people already have benches in the parks and that new facility that's the building that's getting done over on the corner of Maine and in the uh, near Maple. Future. Um, that they'll have benches, but 
that you know that wasn't the whole point of why you need point, uh, benches. Right. So it, I just felt like whatever I was saying was just uh, either really misunderstood <coughs> or he did not have the capacity or the need to understand about um, working with persons with disabilities. I, and and I he also stated his name and <coughs> the Florence Civic Business Association. Yes, he did. And I received an email, and he should have not done that. I have a transcript of what he said, if you want me to read it. Yeah, that's he okay. Also, oh, wow. He also um, said... I just transcripted the whole thing. Oh, I know. Uh, so we're saying that she did a transcript of the maybe, whole meeting. Maybe you could oh, maybe yes. you could email that to people. Sure, that yeah. would be that would be great. Um, I just had wanted to make a comment. I I thought, and maybe I misunderstood what he said, but I I believe he also said something like, "Well, handicapped people can park in any space." He did say that. So, so he did. implying, you know, and I, I felt like that was really um, devaluing and minimizing the needs that people have in Ruth. You spoke really well to that and said that people do need handicapped parking because sometimes you need to be closer to a building and a regular reason. parking space or you need a wider space to be able to open your door. Um, but she also explained that she cannot bend her knees and that she did not even want to listen to that. Yeah. If I can't open a car door, I can't get into the car. So handicap spots are really that lets me do that. Yeah, and you, you said all that. Really. You did, and that was really excellent. So if you I would, if you would um, email the transcript to people, that would be yeah. wonderful. I can't, I'll have to do it when I get home. I can't, yeah. I can't send oh, it from there. No, no, do, doing it at home. That's great, Ruth, if you can do that. Thank you. What transcript is that? That's the one I emailed um, you with meeting. all the people and what they said. I haven't done that. I emailed it two days ago. I don't have that. She's going to email it again. Because I know you just got something from Pam last night. Yeah. Which one is that? That was for the one for September. No, the one I got from Pam was a um, thing. Oh, the paper one was for the one in September. She I got some email from her. She's emailing it to the commission to all of us when she gets home tonight. Yeah. The transcript. I'll resend it to you. According to this, it went. So. Okay, I did not get it. Well, yeah. it's coming. I sent it on the 20th okay. yesterday. But I have a transcript from our council clerk also. Okay. Every month of That's good. Okay, other business. Yep. Patty, you have two things. You have, Patty, have you have two things? Yeah, okay. I do. Um, so I, Patty, what do you think? Here? What do you think of what we should do with um, this? Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I think you talked to the mayor, and I would like to pursue that as well, and maybe uh, it then it goes me finding out information from the city solicitor as to what what avenues we can um, take. Uh, but as you mentioned, the the map. Excuse me. Yeah. What do you mean what avenues? Well, I mean I think you've talked about um, you know filing something or. Um, and as an AD coordinator, you don't know where to file it? I don't really even know what I'm filing. That's what I'm saying. I, I need some um, direction to do this. Attorney Winston, would you know how we would have to, what direction we would have to do? Well, I mean, like Patty said, I mean, we have a dialogue and Mary seems to be responsive to most of these issues and, and uh, that's a good starting point. I mean, um, I mean, this is relatively new. This this um, you know, issue with Florence. I mean, that was just um, uh, over a week ago. So uh, I think starting there. I mean, I wonder if he would be interested in coming to one of our meetings to address some of these issues with us. He meaning who? There. Oh, okay. Okay. Would, would Mayor Narquitz be interested in coming to one of our Disability Commission meetings and really going into depth in some of our concerns, um, not just with Florence, but... Right, but she's already told him, I've already told him. But there's been, he's been invited. To, to a meeting? Yeah. I've already told him. Yeah. Council, yeah. City Councilor LaBarge already met with him. Right. Right, but I think what Jim's saying is inviting um, mm -hmm. Mayor Narkowitz to a meeting yeah. 
I think I'm going to take it amongst myself, and I'm going to call the district attorney's office because they do have lawyers for civil liberties there, and because this definitely is a civil liberties issue here. That would be great if you do that, in the, and I'm going to tell us what you find out at our next meeting. And we also have lawyers through our advisory committee there that do the commissions on disabilities and so forth. It, it's, it's big. I'm not just going to sit back here. Okay. Yeah, and I, I'm not saying I'm sitting back. I'm going to pursue the avenues so that I can be uh, well informed of what to do. Great. To do so in the right direction, the right process. And that's what so the procedure you, right. Perfect. As an AD coordinator, mm -hmm. you can't call Boston and talk to them and say, I need help. How do I process this? Oh, yeah, I, I would call mass disabilities. I That's certainly what I'm asking. Do that, but from the city end of it, right. you know, what, what, how can I pursue this? What assistance am I going to get from the city? Well, what do you mean, what kind of assistance? Well, am I going to get legal backup? Well, oh. you know, who, who's going to be behind me to support this? So you'll yeah, I would like to know that the city, you know, it, I'm representing the city. So you'll research that. Well, I, I can right. say right now human rights is going to come in. Yeah, and I think that's great. Okay. Yeah, and absolutely. they're going to support us. I've already yeah. talked with them. Yeah, that's okay, great. great. That's great. Yeah. All right, other business. Um, Patty, you said no, you had two okay. items. Yeah, well, I went to uh, transportation and parking um, committee just before this meeting um, because I'm requesting eight more handicapped um, parking spaces out here. They need it. And I would like to ask the commission to uh, support that the senior center has an additional eight parking spaces. Do you have to have an ordinance for that? Well, that was part of the discussion at the meeting, um, if there needs to be an ordinance or not. And what did they say? Uh, it, it, it was hard to say that they said, yes, you do, or no, you don't. So it would be best to put, put it all together, because the four that are out here, um, it, it hasn't been found that it's um, an ordinance. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 It's so, kind of common sense. So that, that we need more. I mean, right. it's just, right. if you're exactly. not going to here, where are you going to so, yeah. You're asking us to support that? Yeah, that you would take a vote to support so, <coughs> um, eight um, additional accessible handicapped parking spaces. Okay. okay. I don't know if I can support that right now because I need to hear if an actual ordinance has to be put in place. <coughs> well, I would say if it does or doesn't, uh, we want eight more spots, and whether it needs to be an ordinance or doesn't, we would like additional Because if it's spots. an ordinance, it has to go through a process, mm -hmm. right. and I would mm -hmm. support that right. with an ordinance, okay? But I'm hearing you're saying, well, there was never an ordinance with this one, so is that why they're saying, well, there should be and there shouldn't be? Was that the problem? Well, are we just being asked to support We're just being asked to support idea. it as a, as a theoretic, as a principle right. that we think is a good which thing. Right. That, that no matter whether it's by ordinance or not by ordinance, that to, ha to have eight additional parking spaces that okay. are for handicap are right. so, so, need a motion right. so let's, um, okay. would yeah. someone like to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion that the, just the Commission on Disabilities support eight additional handicapped parking spaces at the Northampton Senior Center. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. That will be important. All right, and your other my last one. Um, for the October um, agenda, you all got three different agendas from me, and I truly apologize for that. Okay. I think a way that that can get resolved is that, and this is what I'm proposing, that the Tuesday before our meeting, I need to have what anybody wants to put on the agenda, on the agenda, and then I can send it out and not say, okay, here's agenda number three. So if people could, oh, it's like a week before. Right, right. That's okay, fair. Right. I think that's yeah. Could you have 48 hours to post. That's completely fair. And yeah, that's true. It, it, we'll you send you an email because, yeah, I'll have the issue I'll bring up for the next one, and I'll, I'll get it to you well before. Okay. And I think, you know, it's great having different agenda items. Otherwise, I talk to Councilor Labarge or um, uh, Tori about putting items on. And then I, I know we always have other business that something can get put in there. But I think sometimes people like to see that that item yeah. is actually written out on the agenda. 
Maybe okay. a better way to budget time so you don't run out of time if you know. Instead yep. of saying other, because you don't know if there's going to be one, right. none, yeah. one, or ten others. Exactly. I think that is fair and reasonable, and I would, I would support that. So let's agree that that's what we'll do. Any announcements? Okay. Yes, I have an you announcement. Okay. That if we have any meetings, I'm going to stress it again. If they run over six o'clock, Tori, you do not have to stay. We have a vice chair she can take over. I understand that. Okay, I just wanted you not to feel com uncomfortable with that. I but I think, it, which I talked with Patty about, that some issues might take longer. Okay. Okay, and I really don't want it to feel rushed. Okay, so I'm gonna just say, now Jim had something that he wanted to bring up. Yeah, well, it wasn't something that. Yeah, it wasn't something that had to. I mean, we're at the end of this meeting, and, and you want to put it on the agenda for next I'll, time. I'll email Patty because I actually want to have a little bit of a discussion with Patty because we kind of we we kind of touched on these issues before with PVTA. That's what the person wrote me about, mm -hmm. so I'll address it with you, and then you can deem whether it's proper to go on the agenda okay. for next okay. time. Okay. Can I just say because you mentioned about PVTA, the date hasn't been set, but. They want to come here again to present, you know, a ridership meeting. Okay. So you'll all know about that. Okay. okay. Well, that's, you know. that's great. I have a lot of interest in PDTA too, so we can discuss that at our next meeting. Ruth has a question. You have a question? Yeah, just, I think I might have missed it. On the agenda, we had the Forbes Library Grant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did we discuss that? Yeah. yeah. You were working on the video just that oh. uh, Lisa Downing okay. um, will be coming to our next meeting to talk about um, the, their project and the, the grant that they've gotten to make their services more accessible. Super, thank you. All right. Motion to adjourn? Second. Second. Or, am I allowed to make a motion? I move to adjourn. Okay. Second. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. All right, thank you.